Okay. All right. Good evening, everyone, for another episode of Dan Does Data. Uh, tonight, we're moving back to autoencoders. We checked these out a few weeks ago, and I wanted to do a little bit more with them. So you might recall um, I had some of my font recognition, font classification data of rendering Shakespeare. And this is the most basic model that we uh, created last time, uh, a few weeks ago, using just purely a uh, dense networks. So just essentially one layer of 128 uh, embedded features, that's all. And just considering each pixel sort of independently, compute 128 features, and then use those 128 features to regenerate whatever the text is. So you got a reasonably large space uh, to work with. And this is sort of the results for one example image. And you sort of get the right idea. And in fact, this might be sort of good enough to do uh, to do like classification of the font. You can kind of get some ideas like, oh, this is really tall. This is not as tall. Things like that. So it's kind of interesting. But what I wanted to do, what I wanted to get working is a convolutional autoencoder. Just like you have a convolutional uh, neural network, you can do the same kind of game, thing where you take a little slice of an image and you use that to produce uh, some intermediate features and then the catch, you have to take those intermediate features and instead of, excuse me, uh, slicing to get less and less, you need to upsample to get more and more. And that's why I've imported this upsample 2D part of the convolution 2D. That's sort of the inverse of max pooling. Max pooling says, of a small 2x2 two two window, take only the strongest. Upsampling says, for each value, make a little 2x2 two two window of it, expand it. There are a couple different catches with this, however, uh, that we are going to encounter. And I think I wanna, I'll just address those when we get there. For now, I want to go through sort of the simplest possible, simplest possible model for a very convolutional autoencoder type of object. So let's start it get right away. Convolution 2D. Yep. Do. And the question is, do I remember how convolution 2D works? I think I do. Make it six by mm, three by three. That's fewer computations I have to make. And the input shape is going to have to be number of channels, one, and rows, and calls. And let's do the max pooling business. I don't know why I'm going up there. I don't have anything there. Model dot. There we go. Add real u. Add. Actually, so I should just explain a little bit more. Uh, I'm sort of following along uh, Francois Chalet's uh, Building Autoencoders in Keras. He had a blog post probably a little over a year ago. Uh, not quite a year ago. Uh, last May, about how you can build autoencoders in Keras and explains what they are. I found this to be a very helpful reference uh, to get an understanding of that and how he actually works through the, the examples. That was very helpful. Uh, so we're on the convolutional autoencoder. He does this with the classic MNIST digit classification data set, but you can use whatever data set you really feel like. Um, in this case, using an image-based data set makes sense for building a convolutional kind of thing. You're using that inherent structure uh, in the images, that related pixels, or you can look for the same kind of features there. Uh, you'll notice he's using sort of the, the functional uh, style of Keras, where you just call this object on a particular node and return like a new node. Uh, but I'm just using sequential since this happens to be a whole, just simply sequential thing. Um, I believe he's doing that so he can get at the encoded bit later. I believe that's what he wants to do. So he's got encoded, decoded, and he might look at the encoded stuff at some point. Uh, but yes, anyway, essentially the first half, you get down to some encoded level. You convolve, max pool, convolve, max pool, just like you normally would. Nothing too unusual there. Then you're at this encoded layer. Note, he's never flattened these. Uh, so it still exists in this uh, unusual shape, this 8x4x4. By four by four. And then all he does is upsamples his way back to victory. So instead of, he still does the same convolution, this 8x3x3, by three by three, sort of the inverse operation. 
and anywhere he max pooled, now he is up sampling. So he's multiplying by two. That's the two by two business here. Also of note, he's using border mode same for his convolution and for his max pooling. But that's not always uh, gonna be the case when you're building models. Often you'll see border mode same for the convolution, but border mode valid for the max pooling. Meaning you're, uh, if you have an odd number, you might end up with fewer when you do the max pooling. And that can uh, cause certain uh, bits of trouble as we may encounter. Uh, one last thing, this last line, decoded. He's got one extra convolution 2D here. Note that he's got one, two, three convolution 2Ds here. He's got one, two, three, four convolution 2Ds here. And that's to turn whatever the final shape is into one kernel. One, one thing that he's gonna compute. Uh, for each of the, I guess he's gonna, you're, you want 10 scores out though, right? What am I thinking? No, 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 sorry. Just one by one pixels. A question from the audience, is it Keras time? Of course it's Keras time. Let's boom, back in the Keras, there we go. Anyway, I really went there because I needed to look up, I do convolution 2D, then I do ReLU, then max pooling. Even though it makes sense in my head, uh, the syntax always, always eludes me. Uh, so that's 2 comma 2, I believe. I don't need to say anything fancy. Wait, uh, yeah. 2 comma 2, not 2 comma 20, oh my goodness. So I'm gonna say border mode equals valid for this. And actually let's check if the default is valid, so I don't even need to say that there. Save myself some typing. But I do need to say it here in my convolutional layer. Right there. We'll say same for this. So that's gonna be the very most basic thing. Uh, as a reminder, let me plot this stuff again. The previous, what I what we auto-encoded earlier. Uh, we've got 16 rows and 64 columns. So that's sort of what we're working with. This is actually super nice for the auto-encoding and the max pooling type stuff because these are all powers of two, so I can always divide by two until I get down to the very end, and I can always multiply by two, and the sizes all stay the same. Uh, but if you end up with an odd number in one of your dimensions, and you try to uh, divide by two, bad things, like when you do the convolution, that's when you say, like, all right, whatever, border mode, uh, same, border mode, valid, I'll just sort of accept it, or I'll cut it out. But when you do upsampling, it just doubles it, no matter what. So when you went down, say from four, size 14 to size seven, that's fine. And then size seven to size uh, four or three, uh, when you're upsampling, you're always gonna be multiplying. So you're gonna end up with six or eight when you undo that operation. And that's gonna be a pain in the butt. So we don't have that explicit problem here. But if we do the MNIST example, we will have that problem. All right. So we do this convolution, we do max pooling, that's the whole normal stuff. And I just want to see, how can I undo this? So that's, we are encoded at that point. So let's convolve again to like, this is the unconvolve. We are now decoding. Again, this is the most, like simple as possible convolutional uh, model. And it's gonna have a, that might actually have a huge number of parameters when I think about it. This will be 16 times eight times 32. Uh, that's gonna be more parameters than we started with, so I really shouldn't do that. Let me, let me change this up. Let me do four by four, max pooling. That, that might actually make the difference. Because then we'll have 16 kernels uh, times four times 16 is the exact same number of parameters that I started with. Okay, fine, eight by eight max pooling. No, 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 that's dumb, that's dumb, that's dumb, that's dumb. So I wanna have fewer parameters somewhere in the middle of my model. Otherwise it's like, what's the, what's the freaking point? Uh, why, why bother? So if I were to do four layers like this, I'd be dividing by two uh, four times and I would end up with 
uh, 16 times uh, do, 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 2, right? 16 divided by, oh no, 2 to the 4, that's only 1. Maybe 1 less than that. There we go. So it'll be 16 divided by 2 to the 3rd, which is of course 2. 2 to the 3rd being 8. So I'll have two things left on that angle. 16 times 2 times what's 64 divided by 8 is 8. 256. So we're cutting it by a factor of 4 uh, with this, this little computation here. And yes, then you want to decode. So you do the same convolution business. Uh, I don't need this dense business. I'll get back to that. No, I don't need that at all, actually. But instead of max pooling, you do upsampling. Upsampling 2D. And I think it's just X. It's just 2, yeah, 2 comma 2. So that'll take each sample and make it times 4. Not multiply it by 4. Let me just draw a picture. That is the only way to only way to, to make this clear. Open up the GIMP. Uh, yeah, sure, yeah, whatever, that's all fine. So a max pooling, let me draw a freaking, where's, ugh, there we go. Nope, that's not what I wanted, not what I wanted at all. Just wanted Let's fill with background color. Fill with foreground color. There we go. Uh, actually, better idea. And it, let's undo all this garbage. I'll just use the pencil. Pencil is king. Uh, size much smaller. Bring out the gamp. Yeah, that's when you know it's it's a good time. Okay. So two by two max pooling says look at a given. 2 by 2 window. Maybe this one is 4, this one is 1, this is negative 1, and I don't know, this is 3. And the 2 by 2 max pooling says, alright, well, take the biggest one of these and only keep that. And you end up with just one thing, that is the 4. And so you're cutting in half in each dimension the overall size of what you're working with. So you're dividing by 4 how many objects you have to deal with. Upsampling says the opposite. It says, all right, we've got a, a number here. Let's call it a nine. And if I say two by two upsample, then I make a new array. And in each slot, I put a nine. That's all. Uh, this really comes from like a signal processing background. And in there, the upsampling would be a little more a little fancier, you would sort of consider what things are next to each other and you might linearly interpolate uh, if you had a 9 next to a uh, 7, for example. Then you might go 9 in this quarter, 8 over here, and then your 7's over here. Something like that. Uh, question, is it possible to add a layer index new information to data before the decoder? Asking for Keras, you know it, a layer that injects more information. So I don't see why not, uh, but I believe if you wanted to do that kind of uh, injection, so to speak, you would have to use the model uh, syntax, uh, like Francois is using here. So you would get to the point just before encoded, and you'd have to introduce another layer, and then you'd have to use a merge layer. Um, I might have done that in one of my I think in one of the uh, self-driving car videos, one of the later ones, I had to do something like that. Can I link the project that I'm following? Of course, I'm on a different computer when I... Let me do that real quick, because that is a, a good point. I will be posting a link in chat just a second. There we go. Okay, so yes, this is what we're following through. This seems like a reasonable size. This might take forever to train. That's really gonna. That's gonna be the downside of this. Uh, that's what's gonna kill me. So upsampling 2D. No problem, right? Do that two more times. Uh, now you might notice something interesting that 
this model is not going to make a super lot of sense. Let's see if this worked. I have a feeling this isn't working. Did I not close? I didn't close my parentheses. Oh dear, oh dear. As usual. I really should have tested that first. There we go. Which means the upsampling has also not been. That's okay. Those are easy to fix mistakes. My kind of mistakes. There we go. Let's try that again. Yeah, much better. And we're going to take a look at the model. It's model.summary. Uh, and you'll note we go through our various layers and we get to the end. And it's 16. Oh, it's 16 by 16 by 64. Okay, I guess that actually worked just fine. No, no, it did not work fine. We, we have a we have a grayscale image, and let me just show you. It starts. Well, the input shape is sort of like one channel, comma 16, comma 64. You compute 16 things, and then you do the two by two max pooling. At the end of this, we have 16 things. We need to get back to one thing. So we need one more convolutional layer. One more, and we want one channel for that, oddly enough. Also, I don't need input shape on any of these anymore. Should probably get rid of that. Let me take care of that real quick. Otherwise, it's gonna, gonna drive me crazy. Okay, one more. And there's all the input shapes in the encoder part too. That's all good for copy pasting. Copy pasting my own code. Always a danger. Okay, almost done. All right, that's better. So you need this last convolutional layer if it. There it goes. Oh, jeez. I think I broke my model. I didn't realize I was still in the uh, like view mode. Oh boy. Oh, the first. Yes, that's right. Of course, the first layer still needs that. Still needs the input shape. Okay. This is how sausage. This is how machine learning sausage is made. Uh, making lots of mistakes, failing quickly. And now, if you say model.summary and you look at the last line, now we have 1, 16, 64. So that's actually correct. That will give us something back of the uh, appropriate shape. And yes, for loss, oh, we need one more thing. I want all these values be between 0 and 1. So we'll use the sigmoid right here. We could do like some kind of clamp linear and other stuff, and that affects how the loss is calculated. Uh, but in this case, sigmoid is, that's, I'm not going to worry about it too much. And yeah, the loss, it might seem weird using like the binary cross entropy because this isn't a classification with two systems, but that just categorizes that like each one is sort of a little zero, one problem. We're computing a probability. That's, that's all that really is getting at. Uh, so we need to add this function and then that. And then we need to do a little fitting. We're going to see how atrociously long this is going to take and how atrociously bad it is. Let's find out. And then I want to get at uh, what are some of the issues when you have weird data sizes. Excuse me. I don't really want train flat, do I? Train index, train labels. What does my actual data look like? I data, just data, is that it? Oh geez, did I not make a oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Data dot shape. Yeah, okay. So I didn't actually make a data set for for this part. So I need to do that. Let's just do it right here. Uh, let's use less data so this doesn't take as long. So this is data of up to n. We need to reshape it so we have one channel. 1, 16, 64. That's right. Let me... Uh, temp data. Let's just do that. I don't want to retype that every time. Temp data. And let's see if this destroys my computer. 
always a risk. Cannot reshape size of array into that. Oh, right. I need a negative one first for all those to handle how many samples I have. Here, when checking model inputs expected, to have four dimensions, but got array with shape, something, something, something. Why is that? Oh, because the test. Temp data, temp test. Uh, ah, son of a gun. That's right. Train index. This is test index. But let me see how I actually did this. I had to make the training and the testing data set separately, and I got to divide by 255 still. I have not done that. Just getting burned by a lot of stuff here. But I put the entire test set in? Yes. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. Everything's fine. We're all fine here. Let's see how this, how much this burns me. Okay. Whew. It's a little Some of this other stuff. Alright, we are temporarily back, apparently. Jeez. Maybe, maybe not. I have the mouse? I have the mouse. Okay, that's a start. We oh we're back. We are back. Whew. Okay. I I should be very, very freaking careful with that. Length of temp test. Yeah, that's half the data. So that's that's not really what we wanted there. Um, I am actually going to nuke. I'm going to nuke this Python session so I don't don't have all of that. We will be back online very shortly. Ugh, misery, misery, absolute misery. It's just terrible. Yeah, that's that's the risk. And now we're like two minutes behind uh, real time in the stream, of course. Okay, now we're back. We're good. Everything is hunky dory. Auto indent. Very good. Very good. I should have made this data set just a little bit smaller, so I didn't get didn't get wrecked by these kind of things. Do that. Grab this kind of stuff. Yeah, that's great. I don't really care about the picture. Go away, picture. Go away. Go away. Go away. Fine. Deal with you later, picture. And by picture, I mean never. Okay, good. Get my indices. Oof. Ugh. Okay. Get my things that I need. I'm not even gonna make the flat, uh, flat things. That's just gonna be a bad day. Uh, don't need that. Don't need that. Here we go. Rebuild the model. It's not. It's not a real Dandas data if we don't have a, a lock up eaten up all my memory, right? Okay, now we should be a little bit better. Train flat, oh. Well, whatever. Link train flat, divide by four, interesting. Uh, how about train index? Should be the same length. Okay, this takes a brief moment and a brief moment, okay. And I'm not eating up all my memory now. It's just a little slow. 
Yeah, just 20% of my memory, not all of it. So that's totally reasonable. Uh, whereas if that's, you know, five times, four times as large, mm, bad things tend to happen. Bad things will tend to happen. Okay. Point being, I want you to test this with temp test. And temp test. Temp test. There we go. Batch size, whatever. Let's see how bad this is. Temp test is not defined. Well, it helps when I spell. There we go. Let's just see how this runs. I have a feeling this is going to take way too long to, to compute, though. Yeah, check this out. It's going to take uh, six minutes to get through. Oh, five minutes, excuse me, five minutes to get through one epic of training in this business. So I'm not going to I'm not gonna wait 25 minutes for this to finish. It's the, the problem with the convolutional model. You can cut down the number of parameters, uh, but the convolutions are more expensive to do. I have to have more layers to get down to some reasonably sized object. Whereas I'm only dividing by two, or excuse me, dividing by four, the total number of parameters, but my uh, number of kernels, I sort of start with one input channel, then multiplying that by 16. So I'm getting a lot more input channels that I have to work, deal with. Yeah, so we're going to go ahead and interrupt this, I think. Yeah, I think, you know, uh, 10,000 samples, that's plenty. It's plenty for him to look at there. He doesn't need any more. Let's look at this. I want to see... Oh, nope, that's something else. Ignore the man behind the curtain. <clears throat> so I do need to reshape. But it's one, comma, this, comma, this. So if we use this very lightly trained model, I stress, like lightly trained, what does it look like? Yeah, that's actually kind of interesting. So our very lightly trained model, it gets, yeah, there's blobs over here, there's blobs over here, there's blobs lower. It's, it's got like a word break figured out, which is funny. That's, uh, that's just kind of amusing. So we could have let that train longer, and it would probably do a better job. Uh, I'm betting it would take like 100 epics. So 100 epics times five minutes, 500. Uh, minutes. I don't have time to wait around for, I don't know, eight out, eight nine hours. Stream is not going to last that long. But this all works reasonably well uh, because our dimensions and rows and and calls were nice powers of two. If they weren't nice powers of two, we'd have gotten burned. And I want to like illustrate this. Uh, let me just grab all this junk. Uh, let me just grab the first one. Do, 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 do. If we were to change, we say n rows equals uh, 15, and calls equals, mm, I don't know, 63. Just like you chop off one of the rows and one of the columns. <laughs> Someone in chat says they can see Jesus. It's possible. Uh, your, your human uh, pattern matching brain might be able to see anything you want. Uh, if you can find the sailboat, let me know. Uh, definitely points for finding the sailboat. So what if you have fewer, one fewer row and one fewer columns? Uh, now, these are no longer divisible by two. And when you do the upsampling, you're going to get wrecked. Uh, let me show you. Even if we don't, we might make some data, fake some data to put into this. Just by literally cutting off a row and a column. Uh, so you say, all right, fine, I'll do the same thing, you know. I'll do some convolutions. And let's, uh, yeah, whatever, let's do this. You do three convolutions, because you're cool. Uh, Model.summary, where are you at now? Uh, so you divided by two, but you said uh, border mode same for the convolution, so it's still 15 by 63. And then you said border mode valid for the max pooling. Uh, so you divide by two, and if it's, it's you sort of uh, drop the remainder, is what you're going to end up doing. So seven and thirty-one. Okay, well that's fine. Uh, you can work with that. You do another convolution, seven and thirty-one. You divide by two. 
uh, for the max pooling, and now you're at uh, 3 and 15. Alright, alright, you play this game again, and now you're at 1 by 7. 16 by 1 by 7, which isn't interesting. That's actually kind of cool. It's like you have uh, 16 features, one row, the row is just sort of the, uh, uh, like what letter you're looking at, and the 7 is like, well, there's 7 letters. That's, this is interesting. I hadn't, hadn't expected that to work out that way. Uh, but the point being, uh, 15 divided by 7 divided by 2 is a little bit more than 7.5. And, and you have to decide what to do with that half. And that's the border mode valid, border mode same kind of problem. So what happens when you want to go back the other way? So let's do our convolution 2D as normal. Start the decoding process. Uh, and uh, you have to upsample, you have to undo that max pooling. Let's see what happens. Let's take a look at model that summary again. Uh, now you're at this one comma seven after let the convolution, and now you're at two comma fourteen, which is different from three comma fifteen because this is times two when really we needed like times two plus one. So the question is, what do you? How do you fix this problem? And I think the answer is to do an in answer, I should say, is to do zero padding. So there's a layer in Keras. Keras zero padding uh, to just add extra junk or add extra empty uh, input. Zero padding, there we go. Zero padding, eh, probably 2D. How many zeros to add at the beginning and end of a two padding dimension, rows and columns? How many zeros to add at the beginning? If dictionary, top pad, pad, bottom pad, left pad, right pad. If the key is missing, default value, zero will be used. So what do you stuff? Uh, so you can stuff zero or you can stuff whatever you really feel like. Uh, tuple event linked to or tuple event linked for. Interesting. How many zeros to add at the beginning and end of every pad two padding dimension? Rows and calls. How many zeros to add at the beginning and end of the two padding dimensions? In order of top pad, bottom pad, left pad, right pad. So we would only, and I guess we do want. It doesn't really matter. Uh, question from the audience. Can you tell me research hints and deep learning? Uh, a question that broad, I don't think I can answer. I was just a researcher typing deep learning to Google and diving down the rabbit hole. Uh, that is gonna be the best best place to just get started. Uh, read some papers, do a MOOC, figure it out. Uh, that is not a question that can be answered in, in 30 seconds, I'm sorry. That's, when I was in grad school, my thesis advisor, he was, he was in like transportation statistics, but he said, the first thing, just check Mr. Google, he said. I, uh, and I did, and you know what? That's a reasonable place to start. If you don't know what else to do, read the Wikipedia page. Uh, it's not always great, it's not always accurate, but it will get you started. It'll get you thinking about these ideas. Anyway, so we can pad with any kind of value, I think. It could be zeros, could be whatever. But what if I just wanted to like copy a layer? Well, there's cropping. Like what if I want to like copy the values? Like that's what upsampling does. It copies the value into something else. Hmm. There's deconvolution, which I know is a thing, but I didn't have a good sense of what this was doing for me. So I use the transformation going in the opposite direction of normal convolution. So there's a shape of the output. Oh, I have seen a, a solution of that. I have seen an explanation of this, but I don't think that's explicitly what we want to do. And I don't want to break out the GIMP again uh, to show that. What is Atru's convolution? Filtering windows of two-dimensional inputs dilated convolution or convolution with holes. Oh, interesting. Also not what we want to do. What is separable? First performing depth-wise spatial convolution followed by point-wise convolution mixes the resulting output channels. I don't think that's what I want either. Uh, so one solution to this is this cropping. Uh, so you take, you uh, strip down your dimensions to like the nearest power of two. That might be a solution that you do. You, so you just drop some information. You say, eh, forget it. But I, ah, I want to make this zero pad work, man. So you can fill in arbitrary values, and you might just fill in, oh, there, instead of zero, we can fill in 0.5. That might be the little solution. So model.add zero 
pad in 2D. And I will need to import that because I did not do that up top. Do, 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 way up here. Uh, zero padding 2D. There we go. All right, boom. Okay. Zero padding 2D, and what are we actually doing here? What is the padding? Padding equals, I think, 1, 1 is right. How much extra more? How many zeros to add the beginning and end of the two padding dimensions? Yes, that is correct. Um, in this case, I want to say 0, comma, top pad, bottom pad. I want it to go on the bottom and on the right, just because that's what I want. And it's my show, so I can do that. And then, what do we want to pad it with? I want to pad it with 0.5, so just sort of nothing, the middle of the road. Uh, what else do we got here? Uh, that needs to be this business. So, should contain these keys. If any key is missing, and this is a dictionary. Oh, I see. Default value of zero will be used for the missing key. Wait, so how do I stuff in a value that's not zero? It's one of these things. Default value of zero will be used for missing key. Uh, so I think this is only pad zeros. How do I pad not zero? Or how do I change the value to not be? So that's that's fine. That's all good. But that just literally gives me some zero information. Where I'd rather have it be 0.5. So now, you can see we're up to 3.15. Boom, we're back in action. And we can sort of continue on as we did before. So let me... Uh, we, but now we need to be careful that we actually need the uh, the up sampling, the zero padding each time. And I feel like that's just going to make us lose information all the time. We'll find out. Uh, six comma thirty, and we really we really want seven comma thirty one. So that's that. The second one still needs uh, zero padding. So let's do one more. The last one. Let's take a look. Where are we at? Uh, 14, 62. We need to get back up to 15, 63. And so that's just in this case, because we had no powers of 2 in these, because we took a power of 2 and subtracted by 1, of course. Uh, yeah. Uh, I did the upsampling. Zero pad. And now, of course, we are back to 16 by 15 by 63. We do one more convolution, just like we did before. Da -da. Let me just grab all this junk. There we go. Uh, da -da -da -da. Cool. Uh, just to get it back to one channel. So to take those 16 channels in the end, 16 kernels, 16 features in each position, because we got 16 times 15 times 63 there, and stuff those back into into this. Okay, so that's cool. Uh, and did I actually... I have no idea. Doink. Doink. Okay, there we go. Uh, and I want to send in all the samples, comma, all the channels, Comma the first 15 rows, comma the first 63 columns. Don't actually want everything there. And same for the test. Dink. Hopefully this does not blow up my computer. That is the goal anyway, not to blow up my machine. Let's see what happens. All right, if this kills everything, good night, folks. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Still seems okay. We're loading. We're loading. I should probably turn on top just to watch the the world burn. There we go. 22%. 22%. Still fine. Everything's fine. We're all fine here. 
Uh, it's got to actually compile the model. All right, it's starting to do something. Huzzah. Starting to do something. And that actually doesn't take that much longer than a previous one. Which makes sense, because it's just padding out some stuff. Uh, but you'll note here, we do this, this zero padding. So we've got 16... Uh, we've got 16 channels, but this last row and last column are all zero in all the channels. And so this last it's up to this last convolution to sort of turn that into something that makes sense. And it's... Eh, you're probably... you're almost certainly going to see some trouble there. I would have rather uh, been able to upsample and just copy another row. Uh, but I don't know that you can do that. Repeat rows and columns of the data by size 0 and size 1, respectively. Yeah, I don't think so. Like, it's sort of like upsampling. Like, you might have to go down to the Theano level to try to do that. Locally connected layers. Yeah, Keras upsample odd number, odd dimension or something. I was looking this up the other day. And I didn't quite get it to, to where I wanted. Uh, which is why, I, yes, you can see I've clicked. I've already read all these all these kind of things. Autoencoder for variable sized images. That's not really what I wanted. Uh, need deconv and unpooling layers. Yeah, we already have a thing that does that. Representations. Yeah. Alright, so this is strange for a little bit. I want to interrupt this. Uh, I want to see what kind of output it spits out. So... Do, 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 do. There we go. Uh, dot reshape and don't want all the things. Make sure I do this correctly. I want all, all, 15, and 63. Again, cutting out the last row and column. Using the model. Cannot reshape size into that array. Oh, derp, that's right. Because it, there we go. No, that's right. Uh, check out the chat. Oh, someone was inspired to check out deep learning and work on data sets because of one of my old videos on Cypher 10 with SK Flow. I'm super glad that uh, you learned it from that and you that inspired you to check things out. That's what I, I get a lot of comments from people like, oh, thank you for explaining things, especially when they go wrong. Like right now, things are going wrong. And they're like, why is this happening? Oh uh, boy, oh boy, oh boy. Right, these are not the same. This needs to be 15 by 63. Nope, no, not 13. 15, 63. There we go. Uh, and in fact, I should probably do this one. Resize this as well. To be. That's a particular thing. 15, comma, 63. It's not going to make a big deal if I show all the original image, but why uh, why make my life miserable? How's this actually going to work? There we go. Well, that's that's about whitewashed, about the level you might expect. That's pretty cool. Alright, so obviously you need to let this train for much longer to start to figure out what's going on, uh, things like that. There's one more thing I want to check out. I will take a quick... I saw there's a question in there. Uh, thoughts on adversarial nets versus variational autoencoders. So, I have to remember variational autoencoders. That's not something I work on every day. Variational autoencoders. Slightly more modern take. Mm. With added constraints on the encoder representations being learned. Learns a latent variable model for its input data. Instead of learning a, so you don't learn an arbitrary function. Uh, you learn parameters of a probability distribution. I have to look at this. I'll be honest, I, I'm not up on the, the auto autoencoders are like my weakest area in terms of uh, machine learning type knowledge. But if I had to guess between those and adversarial networks, I think adversarial networks are probably a 
Who will win the buzz? I think they'll win the buzz. And I think they'll be proven useful for a lot of tools, particularly because in an adversarial network, you've got one model that's doing the training as normal and another model that uh, is doing critiquing. And it's, well, critiquing and it's trying to fool the original model. So it's trying to generate input that uh, the original model will say, oh, that's clearly a four, when it looks nothing like a four. It just happens to trigger certain things. Uh, for a lot of these types of things, I think it would be good to have a classification of, oh, this is a zero, one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and uh, nothing, or I don't know. Or it might just be you look at the actual probabilities rather than the, the biggest probability. And you look at the distribution and say, uh, yeah, the model isn't really sure. Okay, but there's one more thing I want to do. So we've got all these convolutions, and that's great. Uh, of course, in a, if you were just doing the classification problem, you would do a bunch of convolutions, and then you would start adding, you would flatten it out and start doing dense layers, and then make your computation. Why don't we do that here? I think that's going to be, uh, if I can get that to work, I'll be a very happy man. So I'm going to get rid of some of these convolutions. Do I? Eh, whatever, they're fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. We're all fine here. Uh, and I want to flatten the model now. Model.add flatten. So let's make a new model. And I want like all the all the complications here, just to show that that's not trivial to deal with. Model.add flatten. So model.summary. Where are we at after all that? Should be at 112 parameters, which is 16 times 7. Uh, maybe plus. 16. That'd be 16 times 8, which is not. That, nope, 16 times 7 is all that is. So we flattened. Uh, now we can do normal dense layer stuff, right? Let me swing up, steal one of the dense layers up here, like this guy. We'll still use ReLU, whatever activation. That doesn't. I don't want to say that doesn't matter, but that is not the per. Fiddling with that is not the purpose of our instruction today. And let's say you do a dense layer. Okay, now you want to decode. We got it down to 128 uh, things. Uh, actually, let me make it 64, just so I have even fewer. Let me redo this. There we go. Now you want to decode. So you sort of want to make your model symmetric. Let's do that again. So we do another dense layer. Boom. Uh, now you have 64 things again. That's all good. And now you need to take those 64 things and convert them into those 112 things that we sort of started with. So you are you got 64 here. You need to get expand them back to 112. So how are you going to do that? Well, I think you're going to do that with a another dense layer. That is, to me, the only thing that really makes sense you get it back up to 112 things. And maybe you don't even need this this other dense layer here. Maybe this is just encoded and it is what it is. Uh, I, I think opinions differ. But okay. Now you've got 112 things. Now you need to reshape your input. And I think that's the, the letter line I need to import. And I don't believe I did that. Reshape. So flatten just says take whatever you have and put it in one dimension, it's a vector, who cares. Reshape says mm, you can be a little more nuanced than that. Uh, so now you want model.reshape, model.add, excuse me, reshape. And I need to remember exactly how reshape works. And it never worked quite the way I want it to. Target shape, two pool of integers. Right, and it's going to be like negative one for the batch size. There's 16 channels, there's one row, there's seven columns. I think that might actually work. Uh, arguments, target shape, yeah. And this would be a tuple. I think that actually works. You can set the output shape, it says. Uh, but I think that's just, I don't think that's real. I think that's just a suggestion. Total size of new array must be unchanged. Yeah, well. But I thought 112 times 
16 times 7 is 112. Oh, did I not add my final? I didn't add my final, my other dense layer. See, this is why we needed that dense layer. That's why we needed it. Now we reshape. Cannot convert this other stuff. Negative one, none. Oh, maybe I need none, not a negative one. So different syntax from NumPy. Nope, can't do that either. All right, maybe I don't need that at all. All right, I thought you did. I thought it was a four tuple. Could have sworn that was a four tuple. Tuple of integers does not include the samples dimension. It helps if I read, you know. Reading, reading is fundamental, so helpful. All right, we got a few, few minutes left. So at that stage, da -da 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 -da. Uh, da, 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 here we go. So, take a look at model at summary now. Where are we at? We are at 16 comma 1 comma 7. So we can spam up again. Did I include all those freaking convolution layers? I did, didn't I? That was dumb. That was real dumb. Well, now they're still there. Uh, so let's do convolution 2D again. Think this is going to be okay? Let's, it was okay before, right? Yeah, it was totally okay before. Let's see what happens. Don't freak out. All right. Uh, real U. Let's upsample model.summary. Yes, so we need our, our zero padding again. I think I can just safely do this. So I swear this did not actually work for me earlier that I ran into whack, all kinds of wacky problems due to strange sizes. But this seems to be going okay now. So again, uh, we had to flatten, do our dense stuff, add one more dense layer to get back up to the number of uh, the correct shape we need to get to, however, whatever end up structure you end up with after the convolutions, and then you actually need to reshape that into the, the convolution. So this might not be the obvious layer that you want to add. Okay. Uh, let me model.compile. Don't know if I did that already. And let's start the training. And this is probably going to take even longer because it is simply a larger model than the previous one. It'll take a little bit of time to compile. I just want to see it do something. That's all I want to see. Do something. We've got 64. Uh, 64 uh, is the size of our encoded dimensions. So you're computing 64 things for each image. And you're using that alone to reconstruct the entire, the entire image. So that's, that's sort of the power of the, the autoencoder. All right, we're going, I want the loss to get, or the previous loss where you can see whatever you want to see in the autoencoded image, uh, that was getting down to about 0.45 or whatever. And again, this is binary cross entropy. Uh, you could try using like mean squared error too, but because we put it down zero to one, uh, the binary cross entropy might be a little better. And because it's sort of, you imagine it as a probability this, this pixel is black or white. All right, I will let this train for a little few seconds. And if there's any questions from the audience, I will happily take those right now. These, these are the main things I wanted to cover and try to sort out. Uh, because these were something that uh, Francois didn't really cover. He went into like the deep learning methods but the syntax of how do you handle an odd shape kind of thing. And you can make it work with the zero padding type stuff and with the reshaping with the extra dense layer. I'm not 100% sure that that's the uh, statistically responsible thing to do. That's, that's what I'm concerned about because I'm just introducing like arbitrary zeros here. So there's no, there's no information there. Whereas uh, I could, I guess duplicating the information doesn't really matter. All the information is contained in whatever the previous layer is. So maybe I'm not losing that much. Maybe not. And maybe it should be fine, but I feel like the symmetry is, is broken in a way. Although, if, maybe not, because I'm throwing away information when I do this max pooling and I say border mode valid. So adding a bunch of zeros is actually, adding a bunch of zeros is the same thing as, is the opposite of throwing away perfectly good information. I guess if I could add random information, that's what I would want. Because then I, 
Yeah, if I could just add random stuff, that would be good. I'd prefer that. All right, loss is at 0.47 and not. Still certainly going down. I'm sure you could train this for 500 epics and you would learn a bunch of things and it'll all be hunky dory. Uh, I don't really want to do that right now. That's way, way, ain't, ain't nobody got time for that. So let's use this model as is to predict something. And let's see. Oh, oh, hey, this is actually kind of interesting. Check this out. This is definitely still smeary. Uh, we've lost the, like, the gap in the words. Uh, but if you squint real hard, you can start to see things that look sort of like letters. So that's kind of cool. Uh, question, what program am I using here for the testing and the creation windows? Uh, this is just matplotlib. Uh, that's all this is. So if you're in Python, if you're in IPython, you can uh, import, import when I can spell matplotlib.pyplot as plt. Um, and then say plt.ion and then you can do cool things like plot dot plot of, um, I don't know, lumpy dot a range 10. 10. There we go. Nice little line. So, all different kinds of things. Uh, I think I have a, a video on matplotlib if you want to check that out. All right, there's one, what else did I want to do here? I have, I wanted to see if I can make this model even smaller. I don't want, I don't want this many convolutions. That's, that's the short of it. I don't want to deal with that many convolutions. I want a smaller model. So, let's do that. Let's cut out all but the first convolution. There we go. And make a new model. And we are in the last minute. Let's see what we can get done. Uh, yes, here we go. Model.summary. So what is the shape we are targeting now? Uh, we need to get 3472. So I need a dense layer with that many things. That's gonna, ugh. That's gonna be, that's gonna be enormous. But that's just the nature of those kind of layers. Uh, okay, and then we reshape that into 16731. So this is seven rows by 31 columns. That all checks out. Uh, I think we're good. And then this should all be fine. Everything should be fine, hunky-dory. Yeah, there we go. All right, in the last minute. Oh, the command windows, sorry. Yes, you can check out, I use tmux for my uh, command windows. So it's a terminal multiplexer, I can just sort of freely open up uh, new things in my various windows. And if I'm in a terminal session, I can send arbitrary commands to arbitrary windows. Like that, magic. And yes, I have several videos and a website on how that works. And it's a pretty awesome workflow, so I highly recommend it. Uh, we're gonna let this loss climb to maybe 10,000, probably not even 10,000. Is it going quicker? I don't know. There's still a lot of parameters that need to be fit here. Guys, that is a, that is a, just a lot of parameters that I don't want to deal with. Four, seven, all right, that's fine. I'm trained on minimal, minimal data here. Dan does a little bit of data, just a little bit. All right, so this, this really hasn't learned that much yet. You get sort of a line for some of these. It's only picked up very generic information about uh, how high these things are. All right, well, that's kind of cool. I think that uh, is going to do it for tonight. So I want to thank everyone for coming out. Uh, next week, I think we're going to go check out the leaf disease uh, problem again. We're going to do a little bit more with that, try to take a different approach, one that doesn't take so long. Uh, Someone did mention to me after that stream that they, they just let the model run for a while and then actually got to, to like 90% accuracy, which is way better than it got on stream, which was like 15%. So that was good to hear. Uh, that is all we got for tonight, though. So once again, thank you, everyone, for coming out. And don't forget to stay safe in the data mines. Have a good night.